Welcome to uh, EuroPCR 2018. My name is uh, William Wines. And I have the pleasure to uh, introduce you to uh, Professor Michael Howder, who joined uh, PCR TV. Michael, you have been the president of the uh, ESC Association uh, on Interventions uh, until 2018, and you're also course director at EuroPCR. We asked you to um, uh, talk uh, to PCR TV audience because important new data were discussed regarding the role of PCI in patients with chronic coronary syndromes. So what are the issues? Well, William, until, until today even I can say that, that the role of PCI in chronic coronary syndrome was to improve symptoms, was to improve quality of life. But even, even the, this was questioned by most recent trials, at least to the extent. Now we received yesterday a handful of trials that showed us that the PCI stratified specially by a physiology guidance not only improves the angina status, not only improves um, the quality of life, but improves clinically hard endpoints, namely the request for urgent revascularization and that was really new also on the long term run a benefit in less spontaneous myocardial infarctions. And in a very interesting comparative trial, whether we do the PCI procedure in these patients with chronic coronary syndrome, angio-guided or guided by the physiology measurements of FFR or IFR, if we do the latter one, we also have a benefit in overall mortality, restenosis and stent thrombosis. So we got a lot of good signals that PCI really is now playing a very strong role apart from the symptomatic aspect. Well, that sounds really important because in the scientific press, but also in the lay press, um, some have questioned the uh, usefulness of uh, stenting in patients with chronic coronary syndromes. Uh, perhaps uh, we might have been implanting too many stents and for limited or no benefit. So that is a statement that can no longer uh, be seen as valid after uh, publication of these data. No, I totally believe that we cannot hold on that. We, we need to extend it now to the more harder endpoints and the benefits that have been shown there. I think it is very important to emphasize that we need to detect and select the right lesion that we, that we intervene, a lesion that is really causing ischemia, because the more ischemia it is causing, the more benefit you get from the PCI procedure. And the other aspect is the benefit of PCI is increasing over time. So the longer the observation period is after the procedure, the better is the outcome of the patient if they got a successful PCA or PCI procedure. In the first place. So what you're telling us is that uh, these data have not become available until longer term follow-up was uh, available. And at the same time, perhaps um, pooling of the data was necessary. Maybe the initial trials in isolation were too small or not powered for the hard event endpoints like uh, myocardial infarction and mortality? You're absolutely right. Uh, these single trials, all of them, even including several hundreds of patients, were too small to really address the hard clinical endpoints. Mm -hmm. Now we have the meta-analysis, which allow us to get a stronger, statistically powered information on that. And honestly speaking, if you really look at these curves that are generated right now, the most important thing is they are not only separating early and being in parallel. When you look at this development of spontaneous myocardial infarction over the five years post-procedure, they are diverging. So there is an ongoing increasing benefit of PCI there. I think this is also a very important message. And this signal is seen um, in spite of the fact that a large number of patients initially randomized to medical therapy only actually crossed over yeah. during the course of time. 
This is this is the other point. I mean, this is the spontaneous uh, progression of the disease, which leads to PCI procedures. But we also realize from from other trials, such as Orbiter, that that patients, after being unblinded, knowing that they have a stenosis, knowing that they didn't get a PCI procedure, opted for receiving that treated by PCI. So I think the role of PCI really, really has been significantly strengthened. Mm -hmm. But one important point, William, which I think is also a main message out of these trials is we, we have to go away from this purely angio-guided detection of a lesion that is, is identified as being prognostically relevant. If you look at the guidelines, it's still listed there, this QCA related 90%, 75%, etc. I think nowadays, especially in this cohort of patients with chronic coronary syndrome, we need to do the identification of an ischemia driving lesion. And we have the tools in our hands to do that during the cath procedure individually for each of the lesions that we identify angiographically. And if we then, based on that, do our intervention, then we do particular something very well for our patient. And that is a main message coming out of these trials as well. Amazing. That's a very strong point indeed. Um, to obtain these good results, you really need to rely on physiological guidance on top of anatomy. Let me ask you uh, another question regarding the strength of, of the signal or the finding. Uh, listening to you, I gather that prevention or reducing the rate of spontaneous MI is a very strong, very statistically significant finding. What about mortality reduction? Is it a strong signal or a true, uh, very robust finding? Well, when you look at the trials comparing um, the PCI treatment versus medical treatment alone, none of these trials was powered enough to see a mortality benefit. Even if you look at the meta-analysis, including 2,400 patients. But when we look at the large registry where angio-guided procedure was done or a physiology-guided procedure was done, the physiology guidance of the procedure came out with a significant mortality benefit. Mm. So if we intervene, clearly we need to do it based on the physiology guidance. I understand. So these are the data coming actually from the uh, SCAR exactly. uh, registry. So very large numbers, exactly. but of course uh, data acquired over time, um, but not randomized data. No, not randomized data, propensity score. Um, adjusted data, but the message is very strong because that if you look at the p-values, they are very, very, very small, so it means a very high statistical significant difference. Well, these are really important data and um, when we discuss treatment options with patients, um, we tended to tell them, listen, we may have an impact on, on your symptoms, hopefully, and, and very likely so. But perhaps with medical treatment, you might be better off or um, have the same sort of outcomes than with the PCI, with respect of life expectancy or the risk of, acu of an acute MI. Do you think we, we should present the procedure now to our patients in a different way based on, on these accumulated data? No, I think we, we can do so. Maybe we, we need to do so. We have these data and we cannot have, hide away these data from our patients. I mean, we need to tell them that there is, over time, a significant chance to have less spontaneous myocardial infarctions if they get a physiology-guided PCI procedure mm. on their stable lesion. Something important. We need to tell them that the chance to have an urgent revascularization, I mean, urgent means not in an elective scenario, which That's you can decide. You know? This is, this yeah. is something which is extremely yeah. important for yeah. the patient sure. to decide upon what he likes to. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So that's great news for, for the patients and uh, there is also the outside world, uh, both uh, medical and uh, also the lay press, I think, uh, and I hope that with these data, uh, the perception of the value of PCI um, that is not questioned in acute coronary syndrome will no longer be questioned uh, in patients with uh, chronic uh, coronary syndromes, provided we are using the uh, physiological guidance, either by uh, invasive, uh, invasive diagnostic methods or, or non-invasive. So these data were so important that uh, PCR felt we needed to give a clear message uh, to the community. Would you care to, uh, to summarize you know, the key take-home messages for, for our colleagues uh, uh, based on, on the data that were presented here at EuroPCR? So I, I think what we can say right now is that we have evidence that in chronic coronary syndrome, PCI 
especially when it is guided by physiology, is improving heart clinical endpoints on top of the improvement of angina, on top of the improvement of quality of life, especially when you look at the request for urgent revascularizations and now for spontaneous myocardial infarction. We know that if we identify the lesion by physiology guidance, the more pathological the values are for that lesion, the more and the better is the impact of PCI on the future with respect to clinical outcome. And I think this is important. And the other important thing is that, that the benefit for the PCI procedure over time is, is increasing. And that is something which is also very important. So it is not so much the aspect of the very, very short term after the procedure, but it's on the long term run. And that is something which is, I think, one of the additional take home messages. Thank you very much, uh, Michael. This was uh, crystal clear and uh, hopefully very helpful to the community and uh, to our patients. Thank okay. you. Thank you, William. Bye.